there's a lot of work to do. This video is supported by Casetify. Casetify's huge range of cases combines strong protection with awesome design. With Casetify's EcoShock technology, their ultra impact cases are rated for up to 11.5 feet of drop protection. Check out the link in the description and use offer code 15TerryX for 15% off your next purchase. A clean desk means a clear mind. But recently, my mind hasn't been so clear because my desk has been an absolute disaster since I moved into my new place. But the new year has come and it's finally time to get this place sorted. I've spent a lot of time planning this space and I decided there'd be three things I needed to keep this space productive. First, the space needs to be clean and clutter free. Secondly, it needs to be functional, which means I want to have easy access to everything I need to be productive. And lastly, of course, I want it to look good. The desk that I'm using is an OmniDesk sit-stand desk. It has four programmable presets and it served me pretty well over the years. It came with this awesome looking black powder coated tabletop, but a quick tip, dust shows up really easily on a darker surface. So if you choose to get a black table, make sure you're prepared to dust it. Anyway, I wanted a bit of flexibility to move my table from this spot to this spot. So I ordered some caster wheels from Amazon. Installing them was easy because my desk already had holes for leveling feet. So it was just a matter of ordering some threaded caster wheels that match the same boat size as the feet. Okay, so the first step to decluttering the actual desk was to create more room. I'm using three monitors for a great amount of screen real estate, but I've had to face the monitors inwards in order to see the edges of the screen, meaning their stands cut off the edge of my desk. Not to mention that the stands also take up a huge amount of space. So to free up some space on my desk, I decided to use some monitor arms. I had an old artist arm lying around, which I've decided to use for my 27 inch monitor and picked up two Dell MSA20 arms for my larger 32 inch monitors. I opted for two single monitor arms over a single dual arm unit for extra flexibility, just in case I wanted to relocate one of these monitors to another desk in the future. I think these MSA20 monitor arms have a great minimal look to them. It has an adjustable counterbalance to keep your monitor in place and so you can smoothly reposition your monitor no matter the weight. The counterbalance requires an allen key for adjustment, but that isn't a problem because the arm also includes a spot to tuck away the allen key so you always have it handy, as well as a cable route that runs along the monitor arm so you can keep your cables hidden away. What's unique about this arm is Dell's quick release system, which you can use to quickly click your monitor into place. If you don't have a Dell monitor, they also include this adapter to convert your vase mount to this quick release system. The arm also includes a full range of motion with tilt, depth, swivel and height adjustment, as well as a full 360 degree swivel at the joints for ultimate flexibility. Attached to the arms, I have two 32 inch Dell 3221 QSs, which I use as my main monitors. I work with a lot of spreadsheets and PDFs day to day, so I'm a firm believer that more screen real estate means more productivity. On the side, I have a Dell U2515H, which I've actually been using for over 10 years now. It served me very well, and I like to permanently have Notion and Spotify open here, so I can quickly refer to my tasks and control my music. To keep the cables on my desk to a minimum, I'm using an A-Logic Blaze Thunderbolt 4 dock as my one cable solution to quickly connect my MacBook to my monitors and accessories. It also charges the laptop because the dock can deliver up to 96 watts of power. In my opinion, this is one of the most versatile docks out there. Unlike most docks, this one doesn't have a display port or HDMI port. Instead, it has three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back that can transmit data up to 40 gigabits per second. This means you can use these ports to connect to monitors using USB-C to HDMI or DisplayPort cables, or expand the dock's functionality with additional dongles, SSDs, or even a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. On top of that, it also has three USB-A ports that are USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, which means transfer speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, which is really useful because a lot of other docks out there only support half that speed. Rounding off the back, you also have a gigabit ethernet port. On the front of the dock, there's a USB-A port, a 3.5mm combo jack, and an SD card reader. The only criticism that I have about this dock is that they put all the useful ports on the back of the dock. Almost every dock does this, and I'm not really sure why. Like if I want to plug in an accessory, I don't really want to reach around to the back of the dock. I don't know. If you guys know why, let me know in the comments. On my desk, I've decided to use a desk mat from OrbitKey. It has a beautiful vegan leather finish with a built-in magnetic strip to keep your cables in place and organized. As an added bonus, it also keeps your desk clean because you can lift up the top layer letting you store away loose papers that you might have lying around. 
The keyboard and mouse I'm using is the Logitech Craft and MX Master 2S. They're the predecessors of the current MX Master Keys and MX Master 3S, but I've just had no reason to upgrade because they've both been reliable accessories that I use every day. Plus the Craft keyboard has this extra dial that the MX Keys doesn't have that changes functions depending on the app that I'm using. The keyboard and mouse combo also has programmable buttons that I use to quickly sort through windows and multi-device support features, like a quick way to switch between my PC, MacBook and iPad. To charge my phone, I'm using a Signet 2-in-1 magnetic wireless charger. This charger is a great way to charge your devices while minimizing the footprint on your desk. It uses a magnetic ring to hold your phone while it wirelessly delivers up to 15 watts of power. Underneath is also a spot to wirelessly charge your earphones up to 5 watts. Having your phone held upright is also great because it's an easy way to see your incoming notifications, as long as you don't get distracted. Not only that, but you can also rotate your phone while watching media. And come on, who doesn't like the look of a levitating phone? Unfortunately, not all things in life can charge wirelessly, so I wanted a way to hide some charging cables on my desk. Luckily, my tabletop came with this cutout, so I picked up some magnetic cable holders from Amazon, which I stuck to the back of the cutout cover. This way, the cables could be easily accessed, but could just as easily be hidden away when not in use. In the interest of keeping my table as clean as possible, I wanted a place where I can easily chuck any frequently used cables and accessories that would otherwise be left on my desk. So to do this, I bought a drawer from Amazon to add storage underneath my desk. Installation was a breeze. The drawer is lightweight, so I was able to stick it to the bottom of my table without drilling any holes. Once installed, it hides perfectly underneath my desk. Now on the side of my desk, I have my 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. This machine has been a sturdy workhorse for my creative workflow and it's the machine I use to make all my videos on. It's great that I can take this thing on the go by just disconnecting one cable. It packs such a great amount of power for its size, plus the screen and speakers on this thing are just so good. I opted to leave the MacBook on my desk rather than store it in clamshell mode or underneath my desk because I just felt like it'd be such a waste not to use the extra screen. Outside of my creative work, I also use a PC in my everyday workflow for spreadsheets, PDFs and emails, mainly because it's able to support all three of my monitors, meaning huge amounts of screen real estate. The problem is, the PC is heavy and it sits underneath my desk, so I never really have the motivation to clean it. I decided I needed a way to make my PC more accessible. After a quick clean, I popped it on this PC dolly from Ikea. It's made my PC easier to move around with my desk and I'm hoping it will motivate me to get it out from underneath my desk to clean more often. Alright, so cable management on a sit-stand desk can be a little tricky because the table is constantly moving up and down, meaning your cables are inevitably going to tangle up if left unmanaged. In fact, there were definitely a couple of times where I readjusted my table only to have the audio cable yanked out of my PC leading to... So to avoid this, I knew I needed to have the cable routes measured and planned out to make sure I could mount as much as possible to the bottom of the desk to minimize cable movement. There were really two main sets of cables to take into consideration. Power cables to all my devices and display cables from the PC to the displays. To keep everything clean, I installed a cable tray and a cable spine to the bottom of my desk. I routed all the display cables along the table, down the cable spine and into the PC. The power cables are then routed to this one power board which is then plugged into the wall via this sweet orange extension cable. When picking a power board, I definitely recommend trying to find one that has its outlets spaced apart. Nothing is worse than having huge power bricks filling up all your outlets. If you can find one with a few USB ports for charging cables, that'll save you some space as well. Also a quick tip, I highly recommend checking out these Velcro cable ties if you want to keep your cables under control. They're reusable, super strong and even thread through one another if you need a cable with a bit more length. To liven up the whole setup, I decided to get these two bookshelves from Muji. They look good but also gives me a place for bigger items and an ample amount of storage space. On the shelves, I have these Muji file boxes to store documents and I use this massive box from Ikea to store cables and power boards. I also decided to hang this Ikea pegboard from the cross bracing of the bookshelf because everybody loves a nice pegboard. They're practical and they look nice. I also stuck this USB-C cable around the pegboard to use it as a sort of charging dock. For sound, the system's hooked up to an NAD-C352 amp which powers these two Quad 12L speakers. To be honest, I'm not the biggest audiophile but this is some old equipment I had lying around and they sound pretty good. 
Now, before I get roasted for the position of my speakers, because of the positioning of the amp, I just couldn't get the cables to reach the front of my desk. Even though the speakers sit behind me though, it's not as noticeable as I thought it would be. It's not ideal, but I can definitely live with this. Anyway, I didn't want to have my amp powered on all the time, so I hooked it up to this TP-Link smart power board, which I've set to turn off at the end of the day. To light my desk, I opted for this monitor light bar from Xiaomi, which will ease the strain on my eyes when I use all these monitors at night. It's also a great way to free up space on my desk, and this particular light bar also comes with a wireless puck that looks super clean, which I can use to control the light's brightness and temperature. I also added some extra lights around the room for a bit of ambient lighting. To finish off the setup, I added a couple things that I just thought looked cool. And that's my desk setup for 2023. I think it's a lot better than the mess I had before. But I've already got a couple ideas going forward, like an ITX build that I want to mount to the desk as well. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. Alright, that's it. Let me know what you guys think about the setup in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.